Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and welcome back to another episode of Techtopia where today you join me in the brand new animal pen area. Pretty cool, right? I'm really happy with how this turned out. <laughs> no, in between episodes, I have been doing some work to move over some of these animals. Basically, I went over to the land that you can see behind me there, just off in the shadows. And thankfully, it's actually quite densely populated with all of the animal types that we need. So I just grabbed up some of them, took them all the way across the ocean here, which always looks rather comical. <laughs> and I brought them up onto this platform here to give them a temporary home. And of course, you know, fed them a little bit of wheat, seeds and carrots just so we could bring up the population, which I may even do a little bit more before doing the next step. Which basically is to spawn in some children that will eventually grow up and become ranchers. Because currently, if I can just head over to my animal uh, butchering area here, this platform that has remained pretty much completely unused since we first built it a good number of episodes ago. The animal pens don't have anything in, we don't have a butcher or anything like that, so today I, I basically plan to remedy it. So we need to get some children and just wait for them to grow up whilst we go about doing some other things. But before we do that, I have to head into our tiny town hall here and have a look at the prices of the homes nowadays. I haven't really purchased a house in a while, so I'm not sure. I think just a two-person home may be fine because if I remember correctly, I am really, really low on emeralds. And I don't remember because it's been a really, really long time since I've played Tectopia. Basically, long story short, I was pre-recording this series a little bit and then I was pre-recording my other videos knowing I was going to be away in Iceland for a couple of weeks so I also went away then and then I got back and I was really busy and pretty much I haven't played Tectopia or been in this world for two maybe even three months. It's been a little while so Therefore, I've forgotten just about everything uh, to do with what I was doing and what I was building <laughs> and how many emeralds I have, which is 16. Yeah, I, I didn't think I left with many. I think I'm going to try to muster together a few more emeralds and see if we can purchase the four-person home instead, just because I'm going to want to have at least two ranchers as a very minimum, but I would like to have three, and we're also going to need a butcher. So, yeah, they're kind of a package deal, so I'm going to have to save up, what was it, 28 emeralds, I believe? Yeah, 28, which really shouldn't be too bad at all. So I have two options for how to get those emeralds. The first one is going to be to do with our villager trading hall here, but I don't really have anything to trade just yet. That is going to be something I'm hoping to change today. And the other option is to trade with the merchant, which also I'm going to be doing something with today. But uh, yeah, neither of which are really an option right now, so I guess I'm just going to have to wait. And look at that, a baby's just been born and they're falling into the hall right now. Very nice. I think I'm actually going to head to bed and wait for the merchant to show up. We'll do a little bit of trading with that guy. And something I quickly want to mention, this lighting glitch is still not gone. <laughs> I've seen your guys' comments now, and yes, I have tried lighting it up with a torch or something to get rid of it, which, as you can see, does temporarily. I can assure you the minute... Well, it hasn't even got it all, but... Eventually, this will regenerate and continue to be a nuisance, which is quite frustrating. Anyway, it is a new day now, so I am going to head into our apartment building here and do my usual routine of entering into all of these guys' houses and picking up the little hearts they have left behind, because, yeah, I need them. I, I don't think I have many of those either, so... These don't come by very often, so I, I, I've really got to make use of them and actually grab them when they appear, which doesn't really seem to be a thing at the moment. I, I think I might be on the wrong side. There's one, there's two, and that was it. Only two. Well, hello there, good sir. I, today, am going to be building you a nice spot to hang out around this city, but for right now, I really need to purchase some items. So what do you have that I have? Nothing that stands out, I'll be honest. I, I definitely don't have the cooked pork chops or the cooked chicken. I might have some iron boots or iron pickaxes laying around, though. The trouble is, <laughs> now I have to do the tedious task of rummaging through all of these chests, hoping to find something. I'm beginning to hate this noise a little bit. 
It doesn't help that it's one of the louder Minecraft noises, <laughs> and standalone, when you just open one chest, it's fine, but when you're opening probably like 40 or so, yeah, it gets on your nerves a little bit. Iron boots, that was one of the options, right? Seems not great to take these because they're enchanted and actually quite well enchanted, but I need the emeralds. I got an iron pickaxe, but it's been used, it's no good. Two more iron pickaxes, don't mind if I do, as well as two more iron boots, I'll take those as well. And that is the last chest, I may as well take the last pair of boots, and now I gotta find where the merchant has wandered off to. He best still be here, because if I've just done all that rummaging for nothing, I am not gonna be a happy bunny. There you are, my friend. I have some items to trade with you, so please hold still. I would like some emeralds for all of these boots. Thank you very much. And I also would like some for a couple of pickaxes. And I must have stamped on someone's potatoes. I do apologize. You can uh, have them back as well. There you go. Are you, are you happy with that? I hope so. So as I said, we are going to be building something for the merchant today, and as you may have guessed, it's going to be the merchant stool. This token, right, give me a second, this token, where is it? <laughs> it's somewhere, oh, this one right here. So yeah, we're going to be purchasing this today at some point in time, and building up a cool little platform for our merchant, for no other reason than it, it just is a lot easier to find if he's at the merchant stool. Not that we really need him because we have our villager trading hall, but still, I, I have a platform set out for him, so I'm going to be making use of it. For right now, however, I would like to buy one four-person home from you, Architect, and I also want to just take a look at your prices. So we're going to need one butcher, we can go ahead and get that one, and we're also going to need three ranchers, which are... Uh, these guys, eight emeralds each. Okay, so we have enough for two. I'll have to get four more emeralds somehow and purchase another one. Don't you hate it when you have an egg in your inventory and because you're too lazy to put it in a chest somewhere, you just throw it away in your storage room, but you actually throw the egg and then this pops out. And then you don't really know what to do with it because you can't kill a baby chicken. It's far too cute. I also don't really want to kill it when it grows up, because then it would have experienced its whole childhood in my storage room here. So then you're just left with a little chicken running around your storage room. <laughs> I don't know what to do with him. Sh should we give him a name, guys, and just keep him around? Let me know in the comments. Okay, let's put down the new four-person home in this one right here. There we go, and we can also go ahead and chuck down our four kids. We have... Uh, Nidia? Nidia? Not sure. Uh, Mario, very nice, as well as uh, Remora, very nice name, and also Alwyn. I like that name, Alwyn Wilkes. That, it's almost hard to say. I, I enjoy it, though. Um, so yeah, there's our four children. One of them's going to be a butcher, three of them are going to be ranchers, and we will sort them out in five days in game time. For right now, though, I should probably do something productive because we're nearly 10 minutes into the episode here and I've done nothing but talk to you guys. <laughs> I've had fun, but yeah, we should probably get on with some work sooner rather than later. So with that said, let's get started on the first build of today's episode, which is going to be the merchant store over here on this platform. And it's going to be a pretty simple build, so I'm going to go ahead and get it all done and then I can kind of explain what it actually is afterwards, because it may not be all so clear. Before I explain what I've actually built here, I think I need to do a little bit of talking about the lore of our city. Altor X and how it got on the ocean here and why they haven't chosen land. Just a little bit of history about the place. So I'm imagining that in this world, whatever planet we're on, I guess Earth, uh, the ocean levels rose so much that it just covered all of the land in the world and now this planet is solely water. Of course, we're gonna pretend that uh, this piece of land over here doesn't exist. <laughs> Unfortunately, this was like the biggest ocean biome around that had a guardian farm inside of. I did wanna go into a little bit of a bigger ocean, but yeah, this was the best I had. So 
We'll just pretend that land doesn't exist. <laughs> so they're on the ocean here, and, and for the most part, it's a self-sustaining city. They have their food from the animals and the farms here, and everything else the Tanktopia citizens actually produce. That is the self-sustaining aspect of this city. So they could go without needing to buy anything, but they are human and they're probably going to want to buy some cool things, which is where the merchant comes into play, over here on this platform. So... I'm going to say that these guys all have some credits that they can purchase things with. Items that aren't really needed to sustain life. So no food, no clothes, no water or, or medicine, anything like that. Just more fun things for activities. I, I don't know. Use your imagination, right? So what we're going to do here is get some items to display inside of all of these things going around this central area. In here is where the merchant's going to stay. We're just going to put the stool icon right on this pole and he should kind of hover around this area. But all these eight things dotted around are going to be places that the villagers can purchase items from. In theory, that's why we got the hoppers here or droppers. What is it? Yeah, dropper to put the money inside of to buy whatever is on display here. So yeah, going to have to get some items to put inside here. I'm not sure just what yet. I'm going to have a rummage around my storage room, see if I can find anything. But that's kind of the idea here. The merchant brings over some cool stuff to sell to these citizens. Maybe he lives on another ocean city just like this one. Similarly, I I'm not really sure on that specific part of it. But yeah, that's the general idea. So what I've built here is a tiny, teeny tiny little shopping area. So in total, I have 16 spaces to put something in an item frame. So that should be easy enough because I can basically get whatever I want to put inside of an item frame. It doesn't have to be something you can actually place down. But on the longer parts, uh, oh, I need more sticks. Uh, on the longer sections, I am going to have to do something a little bit different because... Obviously, it has to be something I can place onto a block, not just put inside of an item frame. And I would need, I think there's three spots in total, so I need 12 items that I can place down. I genuinely don't know if there's that many in 1.12 Minecraft, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how this part is going to go. And in this version, you can't place item frames on the floor either, which is really annoying. So uh, yeah, hopefully I can find enough stuff to fill it all in. I want to put this book inside of the item frame, but because I have the Tectopia information mod installed, it just straight up won't let me. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go with horse armor. That was just one of the random items uh, I found. Maybe it's not horse armor, considering there are no horses on this city. So yeah, there we go. I have fully stocked all of the shelves now. I'm going to take a quick walk around just so you can see the items. Don't pay too much close attention to them because they truly are just a random combination of different things and I didn't really know what to pick. The only one that I will mention here is we have a nice little uh, shoe display. I know I said no clothes a second ago, but maybe these are fancy shoes, sneakers if you will. So we got some of them on show. Um, but other than that, it's just whatever I could get my hands on in my storage room. But it doesn't matter because I think that adding all of those different colors in actually makes it feel a bit more vibrant and as though something's going on here, which I really like. I'm not sure why the children haven't grown up yet. It's definitely been more than five days since I spawned these guys in, or at least I think it has. I can actually check the age of them right here. Hold still. Hold still. Hold. <laughs> Please hold still. There we go. Days Alive 2, yeah, it is 100% more than that. I think what's going on there, and you, you saw them all come out at once as soon as I started flying over, right? I think what's going on, because I've been working over this side of the city so much, they're actually out of render distance and not loading in. So I think <laughs> I need to get away from this area and just hang about in the center a little bit more. And would you look at that? The lighting glitch remains. Not the same, however, it has changed slightly. <laughs> so maybe we can put another torch up and see if that gets rid of the rest of it. But I don't think it will. But we'll give it a go anyway. And uh, yeah, maybe that'll make things better. But yeah, the uh, lum lumberjacks, the lumberjacks and the rest of the villagers are uh, heading back in to go to bed, I guess, because it's raining and, and they don't like to work in the rain. They just sit around inside, which is fair enough. 
Um, but whilst we're doing that, instead of just wasting time, I'm going to get started on the next big thing that we're going to be doing today in this episode, which is going to be a sugarcane farm. So we can get access to lots and lots of paper and trade with all of our librarians here. I say all of them, there's only five at the moment. I've been rifling through all of these guys a lot in between episodes, just trying to get rid of the ones I don't want. I've sort of been keeping the black coats, the blacksmiths, uh, the librarians, as you can see here, and I think I got a farmer somewhere. The rest of them, I, I don't need, so I'm getting rid of them. But yeah, I do definitely need a very, very large supply of sugarcane. And I have the perfect space for it underneath my storage room here. So if you guys can remember, we have this hole at the end of this end of the super smelter where we have some cows that I never breed anymore. <laughs> I don't really need them because I have too much leather and uh, steak that it's not really necessary, but they're here if I do need it. It's just a very simple bubble, you know, water uh, cow breeder, you've seen it before probably. So I have this this side, but I also made another hole over on the other end of the soup smelter here, and I've been wanting to build something here for a long while now, and as you probably can guess, that is where the sugarcane farm is going to go. So I guess I had better start getting to work with my pickaxe here. I got a feeling I'm going to need more than just one. <laughs> the hole I'm going to make is going to be huge. I'm actually using a flying machine sugarcane farm design. I've, I've never done that before. I never built a flying machine once in Minecraft. Um, so this is a first, which is exciting. But yeah, I just want to build a huge field of sugarcane underground so that every time I turn this farm on it's going to yield a crazy amount of sugarcane and I won't just have to have it running all of the time so yeah unfortunately a large sugarcane farm underground does require a large hole so I better start digging and building up the farm. As you can probably tell, it's not finished. We're missing, well, sugarcane for a start, that's gonna be very important, but also the flying machine and the collection system and a couple of other things. But for right now, I just wanna take a quick break and actually head up to our city and give those nitwits a job because they've been just running around doing nothing for a very long time now. I'm not really too bothered about which one of these uh, nitwits get what. I, I don't want to throw my token on the floor though, so I'm just going to make uh, you a rancher. Don't do that to me. Please stay. There we go. <laughs> You're a rancher. Uh, you can be another rancher. Sure, why not? Where have the other two gone? Is that one over there I can see walking around potentially? Nope, I can't find them. Are you in the storage room? Doesn't, oh, wait, there's one. Yes, Mario, hold still. You can be another rancher. There we go. And, oh, look at you three all together. That's <laughs> awfully convenient. Uh, and then we have one more nitwit running around somewhere who is going to be our butcher, if I can find them. Which I can, over here, trying to go to the library, and they've had a second thought. So, Remora, only nine intelligence. Oh, I wish I made one of the others the butcher now, but there we go. Remora is our city butcher. Come to think about it, do I have the butcher building token? I don't actually think I do. No, I don't. Uh, okay, that's a bit of a problem. I may not have enough of that. Let's have a look. How much is it to buy the butcher's building? I can imagine it's too extortionate, but I honestly have no idea. Obviously, we have all of the animal pens, which is great because they're really expensive, so I'm glad I got that done nice and early. Oh, we just about have enough. That is wonderful. Okay, let's buy that token. We can go place it down, and it is currently nighttime, so we don't really need to do this in a rush, but I am going to release 
all of my animals that I have locked away. But for right now, let's go ahead and put this one in position. Good, that's a valid building. Nice and uh, small on the inside here. Doesn't really need to be that big. All they come in and here and do. Why were you running at me? Do you think I'm an animal? But, oh, wait, no, there's probably something over here trying to kill them. Uh, how did a zombie get here? That's odd. It's fine, guys. It's fine. You're, you're good. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I, I have to carpet up here. As you can see, these are... Uh, I check press F7. These are all spawning spaces, like, throughout the entire apartment. So, <laughs> that's a task I've been putting off for a little while now, to the point I've actually forgotten entirely. Uh, yeah, gotta do some carpeting there. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the, the butcher's building doesn't need to be too big at all, because all they do is bring the animal in here, chop it, and then go about doing their other things. I think I might actually be able to put a crafting table in here. They can craft something. I can't remember what. So as I said, I'm going to let these animals loose around the city so the ranchers can wander around and pick them up and put them in their pens. That's the plan, at least. That was a lot of peas, wasn't it, cow? <laughs> Trouble is, I don't really want all of these just walking around the city, so... Hopefully the ranchers will be able to catch them all and, and put most of them away and if not I mean, I, I guess I can do the dirty work But yeah, hopefully most of these will end up going inside an animal pen and will help sustain the healthy and hungerness of our city I, I don't think that was a good sentence. It definitely was not. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I'm going to keep an eye on all of these animals as well as the ranchers and just make sure they're actually getting put away in the pens and the ranchers are in fact doing their job. They're currently sleeping right now I would assume so I will have to check back in the morning but whilst I'm doing that and periodically making sure all things are running well I'm going to go ahead and finish up our sugarcane farm or at least as much as I possibly can. I say as much as I possibly can because I don't know if I have enough sugarcane nor iron to finish the build. So that may have to wait until next episode. But we'll see. I'll do my best. Uh, I wasn't ready yet for the flying machine to start flying. <laughs> I haven't sorted it all just, just for the moment. Uh, how do I stop this thing? That didn't work. Does that work? It just keeps coming. Oh my goodness, please stop. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Okay, turns out I have no idea how flying machines work. It wasn't meant to do that, that's for sure. At least, not yet, anyway. I think if I replace this observer again, it should start. Okay, so we have something at the end here. Let's not get too close, because it's very, very loud. But something that should hopefully stop the flying machine, or at least turn it around. It turned it around. Okay, wonderful. Uh... I need to race this thing back and see if I can grab a lever before it lands at this observer. As you can see, I've been doing some work. I'll explain shortly. I'm in a little bit of a rush. So, uh, lever, lever, lever. Where is one of those? Of course, I don't have one. I need to craft it. You know what? If, if I don't do this in time, it's not that big a deal. It'll just keep going back and forth. Uh, cobblestone. Yeah, I, I've definitely not beaten this. How do I not know where stuff is in my storage room? I've only been working on this city for several months now. Uh, there's my lever. And have we managed to beat it? I would assume not. Oh, I actually have. Wow. Okay, that's a surprise. Uh, and then if I do that and turn it on, I think that should stop it. Wonderful. Okay, that didn't really stop as I expected it to, but that's fine. So, I think then if I turn this on or off, it should start going again? No. Oh, you know why? This is why. Hang on, because we've got blocks over there. Um, yeah, let's just get rid of that one <laughs> if I can. Redstone on camera. Oh, this is never going to end well, is it? Oh, it's a right old mess. This is one of the reasons I don't like doing redstone. It's just so messy. I broke it. I've made a couple of changes, and hopefully if I now flick this lever, it should go. Yes! I'm actually a genius. <laughs> I'm really not. I just didn't follow the tutorial very well. But yeah, there is our flying machine, which is not currently destroying sugarcane because, uh, yeah, I don't have enough. So I'm going to fill this up as much as I can, but I don't think I'm going to have enough to fully complete it. I would just like to make sure that when this does eventually reach the other side, it is in fact going to turn around and not just get stuck here. Moment of truth, here we go. What's it gonna do? 
<laughs> what? What did I do wrong? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> back to the drawing board. Please turn around. Please turn around. Please turn around. Please turn around. Yes, I am so smart. Oh yes, I am the genius of the geniuses. Not a very good pilot though. <laughs> Let me fly. There we go. What's going on here? Hang on a second. No, I haven't made a duplication machine. It, it's obviously just a flying machine glitch. Hopefully that won't cause issues. I guess since we have our flying machine up and running, which we can turn off by flicking this lever, I believe. I guess that can be another test whether it actually stops. Um, but yeah, now we've got this up and running. All we're missing is the sugar cane because as you can see, I've sorted out our minecart hopper dropper stopper system. Ah, wonderful. Okay. Uh, so we'll have minecart hoppers in all of these rails collecting up the sugarcane and then pretty much how this works is, I'm sure most of you know, but when there are items inside of this hopper, it turns off the rail so the minecart will stop, drop off all its items and then carry on its way. So we've got six of them for all of these lines and they all make their way into uh, a section of chests here, which we are going to make look just a little bit nicer eventually. But yeah, that is what I've set up. So as I said, all we're missing is the sugarcane. I'm going to go see how much I actually have, which is not that much. Having said that, I believe I do have a sugarcane farm in Eridoween. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to go check it out and see if it actually exists or not. But before we do, shall we see how the ranchers are getting on? I'll be honest, guys, I completely forgot to actually check up on them. So you guys are witnessing this the same time as I am. But by the looks of it, they are uh, wrangling together all of the animals. That is wonderful. Let's go see how full the pens actually are. That'll be the decider in this. So we only have it set up on this side. And... Um, they're being uh, a little bit slow, <laughs> I think. I'll be honest, I was expecting more than two pigs. But it's okay, we just got to give them time, which uh, is not going to happen while we're flying over to Eridwine because obviously villagers don't really do anything when they're not in render distance. So it'll have to wait till I'm back. Long time no see, people of Eridoin, how are you all doing? Wonderful, I hope. I'm not really here to check on you, to be honest, although we may do an episode like that soon. Uh, I've been seeing some suggestions down in the comments just for a quick catch up on the old villagers, but not today. This episode's already getting on a little bit, I believe. Um, yeah, we do have a sugarcane farm. That has plenty of sugarcane. Okay, uh, this is great. I wish I could take more than what I have right now because actually that should be able to fill up. Uh, what's this? Oh, that's villager sugarcane. We can leave that behind. Do I have a shulker box by any chance in my ender chest? I do. Look at me being so prepared accidentally. Uh, let's fill this up and then head back home. I made that trip just in time too because I was fresh out of rockets. Not anymore though. So that was just over 15 stacks of sugarcane I've planted down, which means in theory at peak harvest I can get nearly 30 stacks of sugarcane because obviously these will grow too high and the flying machine is going to break both of those. But that's probably not going to happen every time because I will most likely come down more often than not and it probably won't all be grown up. Plus some of it I am going to most likely, I would imagine, lose in between the bushes here. I've tried to plant these down in a way so that I'll uh, keep as most of it as I can but it's definitely not going to be lossless. But hey, 20 to 30 stacks each harvest, not too bad to me. With our ladder shoot looking a little bit nicer here, and when I say nicer, I literally just mean not stone. <laughs> it's only white concrete and sea lanterns, but that's fine. I'm only going to be coming down here to actually get sugarcane out of this chest. But yeah, with that done and the door added in so I can just get to the inner workings when I need to, the last thing to do, and the sugarcane is growing wonderful. I was a little bit worried it wasn't going to for some reason. The last thing we need to do, I'm, I'm finally getting there, <laughs> is to place down our minecart toppers so they can go around and pick up the sugarcane when we set off our flying machine. Something I could... Oh. 
that's a bit of a problem. Um, it's not really because I think we can just break that block and it shouldn't really make a difference. I'm going to actually uh, replace it with a slab maybe. That should sort out. But yeah, I was saying what we could potentially do is set it up so that um, the minecarts won't be running all the time and they can only run when I flick this lever maybe would be possibly a good idea. But I mean... Hopefully they continue to run and they don't bug out and disappear like they do sometimes in these older versions. There we are. They're still running. Okay, that's good. Hopefully they'll be fine. If not, I can always dive underground there and fix it. There was one. There was two. There's three. There's four. <laughs> there's five. And there's six. Okay, good. They're all running still. The other thing that I may potentially add to this farm at some point or another is an auto firing of the um, flying machine here. So at the moment it's just manual whenever I want to harvest I just flick that lever as I've said. But I could set up some sort of cactus timer so that every time you know a cactus grows up it fires the machine. It would be super easy to do but I don't know how often I actually need this running. So for the meantime, I'm just going to leave it as it is, and then I can always set that in later if I think I need to. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> what's what's happening here? Is it is it the slabs and just glitchy minecarts? Yeah, okay, right. <laughs> the slab is... No! Oh, I, I hate haste. I despise it. Oh, that's so annoying. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a slab. Okay, gotta go fix that. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> it's exactly what I wanted to do right now. There we go. That wasn't too bad at all. Let's just get our minecart back down by doing this. There we go. And all is well. I'm just gonna have to leave those blocks open and hopefully the sugar cane won't fall down there. If it does, it's not really a big deal. So I'm getting quite short on time to finish up this episode, so I think we're going to have to save uh, running this farm for the first time for next episode. Plus, I think the episode length is actually quite long at the moment, but I don't really mind with Tectopia. I know you guys do quite enjoy a longer episode since these are quite few and far between currently, so the runtime doesn't really bother me. But the time I have to record it does, so yeah, I'm going to have to save that for next episode. What we're going to do now is quickly go up and check on all of our citizens make sure all is well in the world of Altora X and then I've got one final little special thing I want to do before we end off the episode well not a lot has changed around here that's for sure all that has changed is this cow finally got brought over <laughs> but it is currently raining so I'm assuming they just haven't been working since I last checked on them so yeah that's all I really wanted to do they're all going to bed and I guess now that I know they're all okay, none of them's died or anything like that. <laughs> Not that they really can in this city. That's kind of the whole idea with this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that special thing. Which is to craft ourselves an anvil. I am so low on iron that I actually uh, need to smelt some <laughs> to get enough to craft said anvil. I'm also chucking my gold in there too. Uh, hello, iron supplies. I had more than 27. Or did I? I think I might have had exactly 27, actually. Uh, okay, so there's the three blocks. How do you craft an anvil? I've, I've kind of forgotten. There we go. Okay, we've got our anvil. And we have our anvil because I am going to be finally naming something after this city. So as you can see, we have the pickaxe of the undergrowth, our dwarven underground ravine village. We have the bow of Eridwen, our elf village, the shovel of Asteria set in the desert, hence the shovel, and the axe of Mecklen's Vale because this uh, Mecklen's Vale was named after a lumberjack, so that's why it's the axe. So we have six options. We have uh, the helmet, the elytra, the leggings, the boots, the chest plate, or the sword. None of them really make any sense for this city. Uh, it is in the water, so we could do the helmet, considering it has respiration. Same with the boots, it's got depth strider. Elytra is a little bit futuristic, maybe we could get away with doing that too. But I think I want to complete my set of tools down the bottom here, because just having all these cool names and then just the sword, yeah, it's a bit, you know, <laughs> it's a bit boring. I think we're going to give it to the sword here. The Sword of Altora X. That looks a lot cooler. 
So there we go everybody, that is going to do it for today's episode and would you look at that, the lighting glitch is still there. How very sad. <laughs> so I know we didn't get around to actually buying the trading hall token, whatever it's called, merchant stool, there we go. Um, I just, yeah, don't have enough emeralds for it at the moment so it's going to have to save it till next time. But regardless, I really do hope you guys like this build and the episode as a whole. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now.